you so much for logging on and sharing your input on the Ocala Marion 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan. My name is Franco Saracino, and I work for a company called Kittleson Associates. We were hired by the Ocala Marion Transportation Planning Organization, or TPO, to help them with the plan update process. So I'm going to go through a few slides describing the planning process, what we've already accomplished as part of that process, and what is left to do before completing this plan update in the fall of this year. So the LRTP is a federal requirement for all metropolitan areas with a population greater than 50,000 people. It must plan for a minimum period of 20 years into the future, and in the case of this plan, we're planning for 25 years. The LRTP must be updated at least once every five years to reflect changes in growth, changes in available funding, and changes in local needs and priorities. The plan must include a cost affordable or cost feasible element, which means we have to think about funding that is likely to be available for the next 25 years and compare that to the costs of needed improvements to determine what we think is affordable. Updating the LRTP is a pretty extensive process that takes up to two years. So for this plan update, we began in December of 2018. We held in person public workshops the following spring. And in November of 2019, the TPO board adopted goals and objectives for the plan based in part on what we learned in those workshops and through an online survey that was administered at that time. We are now in the process of completing a needs plan, which involves identifying needed improvements that will subsequently be prioritized and balanced against estimated funding that will be available. Finally, by November of this year, the plan will be adopted in a public hearing by the TPO Governing Board. So over the course of the last year, we've done all of the background work to support the plan update process, and we've completed five documents, all of which are available on our project, project website. And we encourage you to log on and download these documents if you would like a more in-depth review of the planning process. As I already mentioned, we identified a vision statement and goals and objectives to guide the plan development, both in terms of assessing our transportation system to identify needed improvements, but also to prioritize those improvements using metrics that are tied to the goals and objectives. So the vision statement is to develop a safe, convenient and accessible multimodal transportation system that supports a vibrant economy, preserves existing assets, and protects the natural environment. The goals are basically a breakdown of the various elements in that vision statement, and the objectives, of which there are about 20, provide actionable strategies to activate those goals or translate them to system improvements. So there are several elements in addition to the goals and objectives that go into development of a needs plan, including a review of other plans de developed by the cities of Ocala, Bellevue and Dinellon, as well as Marion County and the Florida Department of Transportation. A technical analysis, again, based on the plan goals and objectives is another integral part of identifying needs. And of course, input from our residents, businesses, and other stakeholders have been a key element in the development of the needs plan. So the needs plan is composed of three general categories of projects. The first is roadway projects, which include three different general types of improvements. We have about 70 operational improvements, which include things like traffic signal improvements, turn lanes, and technological infrastructure to improve the movement of traffic on our existing roadways. We also have identified 60 what we call capacity improvements, which include adding lanes to existing roadways and in some cases building new roadways. Based on our technical analysis, we've also identified eight roadways for further study, and we will set aside funds in the cost feasible plan to do those studies. The next category of projects includes improvements to our public transit system, which includes either improving existing bus routes by increasing the frequency of service of those of those routes, uh, but also a number of new transit routes and improvements at bus stops to make them more comfortable and more effective. 
And last but not least, the plan includes bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure improvements, which consist of 30 new trails or trail improvements, 40 bicycle lane projects, and almost 200 sidewalk projects. So before we get into the interactive map tool that you can use to review individual projects and provide your comments, uh, I want to make do a quick look forward at where we go from here. By the end of this summer, we will prioritize projects and develop a cost feasible plan of improvements. We'll present that draft plan to the TPO governing board in September and plan to go back to the board in October to adopt the final plan. So please stay tuned through our website and social media and stay involved. We so appreciate your involvement and input into this important process. Derek and I are available anytime for a chat or an email if you have questions or if you would prefer to provide your input in that way. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the interactive process that I will now demonstrate. All right, I want to start by by reminding everyone that this site will be available through July 18th. So please tell your family and friends about it. The more input we get, the better plan we'll end up with. So we really appreciate your comments and you spreading the word about uh, the opportunity to comment on the plan. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes walking you through the virtual workshop, showing you how it works. The first module is 2015 and 2045 population in Marion County. And what you can do with this map is click on the map, zoom in or out. You can also click on a particular area for example, I'll click on this zone over here, and I can see here that in 2015, the population was 3,094. And almost all of that was single family population, 3,079. But if I hover over this other sliver, the multifamily population was 15. What I can also do is slide this gray bar to the left, and that will magically change the pie chart to 2045 population. So that becomes 3,752. Again, most of it is single family with only 38 multifamily. What you can also do is zoom out a little bit and scroll this bar back and forth to get a visual idea of where the population growth is expected to occur. You can see that down here in Southeast, sorry, Southwest Marion County, there's a lot of growth as well as in the southeast. There's also a legend here to give you a sense of the magnitude uh, of population associated with the different colors on the map. So when you're ready to scroll to the next module, you'll click on this arrow button in the upper right corner. That will disable the map so that you can scroll and you can go on and do the same thing with population. So where are the jobs in Marion County? Similarly to population, you can scroll this gray bar back and forth to see where the growth is expected to occur. And you can click on any one of these zones. For example, in 2015, in this zone, we have 134 jobs. And jobs are broken down by industrial, service, and commercial jobs. Again, we can scroll the bar and that will change to 2045 employment or jobs. In this case, commercial jobs, which includes things like retail, grows considerably overtaking the other two categories. So we, there's a lot of information on these maps that can help you to get a sense of, in addition to the problems you know about today on the transportation system, where we might have additional problems in the future based on where that growth is expected to occur. All right, so I'm going to scroll down. This next module is where you have the opportunity to provide feedback on the needs plan. So if I click on this button, click to enter public feedback, it will open a new window. And when that new window opens, please click on proceed as guest. And that will then bring up a map of needs projects and it defaults to sidewalk projects, but you can view all the different types of projects, sidewalk, bicycle, trail, roadway and transit projects by clicking on any one of these categories in the right margin. And when I'm what I can do here is click on any project on the map 
and it will tell me about that project, what roadway it's on from and to the type of project and a description of the project itself. There are two different ways that I can interact um, with this, this map and provide input. One is to, is to click on one of these comments. So all of the comments that have been logged into the system will be listed in this right margin when you click on the sidewalk project category. I can click on one of those comments. It will highlight it in terms of where it is on the map. And then I can either agree with it by clicking on the heart button or click on this dialog box button and comment on the comment. The other way that I can interact is I can go to the bottom here, click here to comment, click on that, and log my own comment. Now, where, where I want to put the comment depends on where I click on the map. It doesn't have to be on a project, it can be anywhere. So I'm going to click on this project, and then I'm going to click on this drop down box and select the type of comment. Um, it's not a connectivity, pavement, or safety comment, it's another type of comment. So I'm going to click other. If the comment is in relation to a project, in this case it is, so I'm going to rate that project. I'm going to give it a maximum rating of five, and I'm going to type my comment here. I'm going to just say test, and then click report it, and it will log the comment. Now, if you want to place a comment in a very specific location, for example, the roadway out in front of your house, what you can do is type the address of your house in this bar, and it will place the comment for you in that exact spot. So once you've done that and, and entered your comment, click report it. And it submits the comment into the system. You can do the same thing for any of these different categories of projects in the same exact way. So I'm going to now go back to the original window. And, and the last thing that you can do is view comments in this next module. You can view them in terms of a summary of comments by type of comment. In this case, there have been two comments related to roadway connectivity, two comments related to road safety, and three related to traffic congestion. You can also click on a particular comment on the map, which is signified by these different icons. It'll show me the comment. It will also show me, if I click on this right arrow, the projects that are on that roadway or on that segment. In this case, there are several. It also summarizes comments in terms of the number of improvements that were ranked. Remember, you can rank projects as well. And it does so for, in this module, for roadway and transit, or together, motorized projects. And then the same thing for non-motorized projects, bicycle, pedestrian, and trail improvements. And it works exactly the same way. So that is the virtual workshop. We have here also next steps, which I talked a little bit about in my presentation, and links to get involved in a variety of different ways, including our project website, our Facebook page, and our Instagram page. And once again, if you have any questions or you want to email or call and discuss anything at all with us, either Derek Harris or myself, our contact information is here at the bottom. Again, thank you for participating and thank you for your interest and your comments.